Right, we have four transistors. Three of them, these first three, are 9014, there, there, and up there. But the fourth one is different, it's 9015. Now, you have to get both the orientation correct, so we need to get them the right way around. We can follow the uh, cut-off edge guide for that. But we also have to get the NPNs where they belong and the PNP, which is up there, where it belongs. So it's very important to get transistors the right way around and the right numbers. Now, transistors kind of push in and their legs splay out. And I like to push them down quite hard so that you get onto the little... Um, squished bits, the bits that are, I don't know, are they meant to act as stops or are they meant to act as wide pieces to hold the transistor in? I mean, it's held in anyway because the legs are bent out, but uh, yeah, and then I'll probably, after I've soldered it, turn it so that it's nice and neatly lined up with the, uh, the silk screen. Right, there they all are, and I've double checked that this one is definitely the 9015 in its correct position. Let's get those soldered in. So I was singing, you say cicada and I say cicada. Actually, I think that's right, isn't it? I think the British pronunciation was cicada and the US one was cicada. Sorry, I'm rambling, but then now I've joined those two legs together. The solder has bridged across the gap. Let's have a closer look at that. So you can see that the solder has um, actually gone across the gap and it's connecting those two legs together. Now that of course would make the circuit not function. I don't know whether those are collector base or emitter base or whatever they are, but that's clearly not right. So we need to remove that solder. And I think actually that this is the perfect opportunity to try using this solder wick, which I got recently and see if it uh, actually works. Right, let's give this a try. Camera's only an inch above the PCB, so it's a bit tricky getting to it, but let's heat that up and put the wick in. Now the wick doesn't seem to be absorbing anything. I was told that this wick was fake rubbish, so that's stuck to there. So let's try a bit of flux on that. So let's try this flux pen. This was a gift from... Uh, someone I met who I've been meaning to say thank you to and right so there's some flux on there let's see if that makes it accept the solder any better oh I can see the flux spilling out over the board but no this wick is not really absorbing that solder very well I mean it sort of worked and you can see a little bit of solder has soaked up into the wick but I was expecting it to really soak up like a sponge. Let's take a look at the end of that wick just to see how ineffective it was. I mean, it really didn't suck the solder up very effectively at all. Let's look at the other side. No, it just didn't absorb it at all. So I'm starting to think that with things like um, equipment, soldering equipment, uh, you do need to spend a little bit more money. So I might try and get um, the Goot wick, I think it was, which is the, the genuine thing. See if I can get a, a better type of solder wick. Because, I mean, if I don't have a good experience with it, I'm not going to use it. It's a bit like the um, soldering iron Brillo pad sponge thing, this thing, which doesn't seem to work very well. So maybe I need to get a, another better one of those as well. Anyway, I'm reasonably happy that I've effected um, a good repair on those transistors. I haven't got a solder bridge anymore, so that's fine. Uh, let's get on with the remaining two transistors. Right, so all the four transistors are done. Of course, the dilemma here is that when you have the camera hovering four inches above the board, and I can't really see what I'm doing, I do make a bit of, hash, a bit of a hash of the soldering when the camera's not uh, above the board of course it's a lot easier but that's just a youtuber's problem I have to solve that somehow now this is the capacitor I'm going to leave out it's 0 0.022 microfarads um, it's definitely this one because uh, I know it's not uh, a an electrolytic it's not polarized it doesn't have a plus symbol next to it but it's not uh, a very convenient scale or it's not a very convenient way to mark this. 
0.022 microfarads. If we move that decimal point three spaces to the right, it will go there. So it'll be 22.0 nanofarads. So it's 22N. And then if we look at the capacitor itself, um, that's marked 223. 22 and then times 10 to the 3 multiplier. So it's 22,000. So this capacitor is actually marked in picofarads. Uh, 223, 22N. It can be a bit confusing. Right, next we have these two electrolytic capacitors. Uh, they're 47 microfarads, so this is marked 47 microfarads at 50 volts, or at up to 50 volts. They have a plus symbol and a white area for negative, and similarly there's a white area with the negative uh, lines on here. Typically these things aren't marked plus, there's no plus on here, but the negative is marked, so as long as I get that negative side lined up with this white uh, half circle, then we're good. Now you can see that the uh, spacing between the wires of the capacitor and the holes in the board are not the same, and I can force this uh, to some extent, but you don't want to go too crazy because it's going to put a lot of stress where the uh, legs of the capacitor actually come out of the body. So I'm going to leave a little gap. That does unfortunately mean they're going to sit quite high. Right, well now on the second capacitor they've drilled the holes much closer together so that one can sit flat on the board and that's just going to look horribly asymmetrical so although electrically it probably makes sense for it to sit down on the board I'm kind of tempted to leave a little gap so that they look the same aesthetically. It's a bit OCD but well that's me. And you can see why the legs are further apart on one of these capacitors than the other, and that's because they've run a track uh, between the legs of this capacitor, so they've spaced them further apart. But it means you get that rather annoying result. Yeah, that's quite irritating, really. Right, 22 microfarads is up there. Uh, it's a smaller capacitor, so the legs are slightly closer together on the body, and yet they're way apart on here and once again it's because there's a track running between the uh, the pads so this one's going to be a bit of a stretch uh, same thing again negative goes to this white area here so it'll go that way round now these two red LEDs uh, orientation can be done based on this flat they've marked a flat in the circle of the LED and on the body of the LED there is a flat, uh, you can see it there on the left, but um, the LED has current flowing through it, this is conventional current flow, from the positive of the battery down through that resistor through the LED in the direction that it sort of is an arrow. So current flow passes through the LED in the arrow direction and through that transistor and back down to minus or ground here marked with this symbol. So that's conventional current flow flowing round that way, and that's how you work out which way round uh, the LED goes, but it's probably easier for us on this occasion just to follow this guideline where the flat on the uh, symbol there is the flat on the body. So let's get those two in. So I've just put some blue tack up against the LEDs to hold them in place while I tip it over and solder it. You say... Cicada. And I say... Cicada. <laughs> right, let's solder these LEDs. Let's solder with the silent L that you Americans pronounce solder. Don't know why that is. Why should that have a silent L? I don't know many words that have a silent L.